Well, today it was officially announced that Kona has been postponed till February 6th, I believe. So that's kind of irony, eh? Everyone, so Canadian of you. Everyone was giving us a hard time. We're doing, uh, we went to Kona back in late end of January, early February, doing some testing and everyone's giving us a hard time. Why in the world would you go to Kona? in February to test. Uh, because Kona's in February. Duh. So, uh, that's kind of, I mean, it sucks, obviously. Would much rather be going in October. I'd much rather be doing like 20 races uh, leading up to it. But, uh, I mean, I'm not complaining because it definitely is cooler there and less humid and the sun is a bit less intense. And I have literally every piece of data one could want for that time of year. So that's really cool. That's a pretty cool development. In terms of, you know, what I've been doing, if you just watch the YouTube channel, it would seem that all I've been doing is riding bikes, uh, which I have been doing a lot of, but I also still been uh, trying to improve my swimming <clears throat> and also uh, working on specific areas on the bike. And then also uh, trying to make some gains in the run. So unfortunately the pools have been closed here for I think I'm going on almost eight weeks without swimming but uh, Fortunately, I have a Vasa trainer So I've been really putting that to use and I also have an aluminum polished mirror that I have under it <clears throat> and um, So I've taken that as an opportunity to really kind of try and forget the old neural pathway that I was firing under and and ingrain um you know, good, pretty good range of motion, you know, perpendicular arm to the, to the ground and then strength under load with that. And then I've also taken it as an opportunity to try and improve my, my mobility and flexibility. And so I've had a, a bunch of different exercises I've been doing for that. Uh, and definitely have seen improvements just, just through the exercises I've been doing. <clears throat> certain things I truly couldn't do and now I can do so that's good and I can't really see that not uh, at least paying a little a, a few dividends in the future um, I mean my swimming I don't really know if there's anything I could do to make my swimming worse so all this stuff that I have been doing I'm hoping will uh, at least make it a little better at the very least I've been wanting to ingrain these habits because I am really tight uh, and so I've really wanted to ingrain like a dry land routine. And so I definitely have done that. And I guess we'll wait and see when we get back into the water, if it pays, pays some dividends, but I can't see letting that habit go away because I do think that it's going to be useful and beneficial. So that's what I've been doing on the swim. And then kind of, kind of on a related note, I also started doing yoga. And I think I'm on like, I don't know, 50 plus days straight of doing yoga. And yoga, I mean, it sort of started as actually doing yoga. Like I was working through a book and everything, but now it's definitely progressed to using yoga and the words and stretching interchangeably. So, so really I've been, you know, incorporating a stretching yoga routine, but I am <clears throat> also uh, you know, doing breathing, being, being very present, being aware of my breathing. And so I'm going to keep calling it yoga, but that's another thing that I've really wanted to, you know, make habitual. And I sort of just pushed it off, pushed it off, but <clears throat> watching myself in videos, as well as my internal feelings. Uh, I don't know if I can go much longer doing sort of the training and everything I've been doing without without a yoga program because I'm definitely on the probably genetically the very rigid end to begin with. So you take someone who's on the very rigid end of things and then don't do any form of, you know, uh, lengthening and loosening work, you become maladaptively uh, rigid very quickly. And I definitely um, have, have brought in a new habit that I feel really good in my body and my mind too. I can just tell it's something I've been, I've been, I've been craving because <clears throat> I, I have always liked seated meditation. So it's kind of a mix of seated meditation and, um, you know, stretching and stuff. 
So, so that's something I've, I've incorporated and I've really taken to, and I definitely will make time for at all times in the future. And then on the bike, I mean, you know what I've been up to with regards to, I guess, goals and endeavors. Uh, but the big one, I would say that I've been, I've been, you know, forcing myself to get in the habit of <clears throat> is riding the TT bike. And I've always rode the TT bike, <clears throat> but uh, I never rode in the TT position, which is kind of stupid. And people actually commented quite a bit about that. Like, if you ever saw pictures and stuff, you'd I'd rarely be in the TT position. And to be honest with you, I haven't really rode in the TT position in training or other than racing since I used to train exclusively outside, which it's been uh, 2013 was the last time I did my training, all my training outside. And so I think um, where I started to really let it go, though, I still did a little bit in like 2014, 15, and 16, but where I really let it go is when I got onto the rollers, sort of end of 2016. And it was just really scary and dangerous to ride down in the TT position then. And then I rode rollers straight for like probably almost two years. And uh, so then I completely relinquished riding in the TT position. And then that just became the habit. And so then I, and then I actually probably like really uh, lost my adaptation. And so then I just hated riding in the TT position. And so anyways, long story short, I think there's definitely room to improve just based on the fact that I was doing no training in a TT position. Then suddenly I would go to a race and ask myself to push big power in the TT position. Um, I definitely, especially over an Ironman, I think I got away with it in the 70.3, but over the Ironman distance, I think it was definitely causing problems that showed themselves as horrendous second half of run, horrible finish to the bike, final hour of the bike. These are all things you'd expect uh, for someone who's asking their body to do something that they have not really trained to do. So I've really created that habit and, I, and some of the techniques I've used to ingrain that habit is looking at my easy rides as an interval workout where the intervals are not hard, they're TT intervals. And so it actually has made my, my easy rides like very enjoyable and pass by a bit quicker. And, and I feel like I'm working towards something as I'm becoming stronger and, and more used to the TT position. And then I'm slowly getting back to where I was back in 2013, where I went for a ride outside the other day. And I was like, actually, it wasn't an interval part. It was a, a recovery period. And I actually forgot I was in a recovery period and went down into the TT position because I preferred the TT position to the upright. So that's what I've been working on on the bike other than obviously the, the exploits uh, on Zwift and on, on, the, on the mountain. And then finally on the run, I mean, the run is the one where I've struggled with over the years with like, what do I do with my running? I mean, it's no secret. Cam Worf makes sure to comment on how bad my running is. And so the whole world knows. And um, I've always argued, well, my speed's good. My speed is good. Uh, so why should I fix, you know, it doesn't look pleasant, but it's getting the job done. And, you know, there's an element of truth to that for sure. Um, but, but I'm definitely uh, getting older and um, I can, I'm starting to feel it in that sort of thing. So um, I, I want to be, you know, I look at Jan, for instance, who's, who's, you know, I know a motivation for him is going to, be try and be the first man to win Kona in his 40s and so you know I would also like to be like eventually in my 40s and say I want to try and win Kona in my 40s but if I don't if I if I get injured severely injured or my body breaks down I'm not going to be able to do that so I think it starts now and so I've definitely been uh yoga the yoga routine's been one element of that um but additionally uh, my run coach, Aaron, has been, uh, my run form coach, has been uh, really helping me to try and improve in that department as well. And I mean, it's early days, but uh, I definitely am seeing some improvements and maybe we'll show that when I feel a little more confident showing that. But uh, visually anyways, and it also feels um, a lot, a lot improved 
i.e. less taxing on my joints and body and stuff. Um, maybe that's a good, actually a good post in and of itself if we, if we agree that we've, we've made some, some, uh, some positive work there. But I will say that we are moving in the right direction in that department. So that's what I've been doing for the most part. That's what I've sort of focused my attention on be, with no races really on the schedule. So things change a little bit now though, that like we kind of have a definite first, everything was in limbo, but now we have like a, a pretty definite date for Kona. We hope that that'll happen in, in February, of course. We hope things will calm down. Problem, I'm not Kona qualified. That's a big problem. Uh, so, so I ha all I can do really, nothing's in my control. All I can really do is hope and pray that races will come back late season. So. You know, what am I targeting? What am I thinking? What am I starting to to draw the plans up for? Well, St. George is uh, middle of September. Ironman St. George. Ironman Texas is the middle of October. Ironman Arizona, middle of November. So those are kind of the three targets. Obviously, if one gets canceled, then we go move to the next. And so it's a very odd time for programming and stuff. It's like you kind of... You kind of got to be in the off season until things look a little brighter and then and then maybe start the training. So that's why I've really tried to focus on things, as you'll notice, all the things I've been saying really aren't amassing fatigue um, or, or injury, I guess, susceptibility. If anything, they're they're doing the opposite. They're they're trying to make me a more resilient athlete and um, and improve, you know, my mechanics and all things that will pay big dividends in the future. And so that's really what I've focused on and have has become my goals for right now. But uh, let's let's hope that we can get that KQ and uh, do it in either St. George, Texas, or Arizona. Arizona would be really nice. It's only an hour and a half away. Um, and so yeah, so that that's what we've been doing for the most part. And pools open up. This hopefully next week here that you're allowed to open them, but they're not open yet because they got to put like the protocols in place, keep people safe. So that should be nice to get back into the water. I'm really excited for that. <clears throat> and uh, and then if it, once we get going on that, then it's then we can we can get back to some real serious work and hopefully hopefully get in some good preparation for those those late season Ironmans.